Hey, this morning, super duper excited about the message. Uh, I hope you are too. We're in a series that's all about prayer, all about talking with God, learning how to talk with Him, uh, practicing that in our life not, life, not just coming to church as we often do in America and just soak it in. And then when we walk away, sometimes we have a difficult time of putting these things into practice. We don't know the first step. And so and we're, we're spending an extended period of time learning how Jesus prayed, uh, learning how he taught us to pray. And then, of course, uh, looking at the, what makes prayer powerful. And, and we've been in that portion. This is the last series of messages on prayer. And we're talking about what making prayer powerful in our life. Last week, we talked about praying in the name of Jesus. Uh, praying in the name of Jesus makes our prayer powerful. Amen? Because the name of Jesus is above every other name. And so uh, this morning, before I get headlong into this, I just want to uh, ask you to, to rally around something. How many know Thanksgiving is coming up? And um, man, as a church family, we don't want anybody celebrating this time alone or maybe uh, not having the, the resources. So if, if this season you're finding yourself away from family, uh, or maybe this is the season where finances are just tight for this year. Um, man, we want you to know that, that you have a place. And uh, there's this little QR code up there, and there's a big banner uh, in the foyer. Uh, there's on the back of your notes of the uh, month at a glance, there's this QR code. If you find yourself in one of those circumstances, if you'll just take your phone, let your, you know, you know how to do the deal. You, you, your phone takes a picture of that, and it directs you to a form that you get to fill out. It's totally private. This comes to us. Um, and if maybe that's not you, maybe this year you're like, man, we're good. Man, we're, we've got family, we've got friends, and, 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 and we're doing well. Uh, consider doing this. Consider inviting somebody from our church family who might fill out one of these forms and say, you know what, I, I just I don't, I don't have family around this year. Uh, and you'd be brave enough uh, to say, man, we would set an extra plate or a couple extra plates at our table. Elise and I have done that almost every year. We invite people over for Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, and uh, it, it's awesome. And so I just want to encourage you to do that. Maybe you're not brave enough to invite somebody into your home, but maybe you can say, hey, um, I've got a few extra bucks. If anybody says that they're a little short on funds and we could provide a meal, that you would say, hey, I'll give towards that. Either one of those, man, take that QR code. If, if you're in the first camp, do that. If you're in the second camp, do that. And let's just make sure that there's nobody alone this holiday season. Amen? Amen. So I, I just preach you, appreciate you as a family doing that and, and honoring that. So this morning, we are looking at how Jesus devoted himself to prayer. And we just feel like if Jesus did it, probably it's a good idea that we do it. If we are going to call ourselves followers of Jesus, if we're going to call ourselves Christians, then prayer has to be that, that, that practice in our life that we're comfortable with. And so often, many of us uh, at times, even in my life, I'm uncomfortable with prayer because of a lot of different reasons. But it, it's so important that we push past the uncomfortableness. We push past uh, and, and, we, and we actually learn how to pray and we actually study the life of Jesus, who is our, our example, and that we even look at the earlier, earlier fo earliest followers of Jesus. They devoted themselves to prayer in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It says, they, being the first followers of Jesus, the disciples, did, devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. It's important that we, in this day and age, 2021, we're no different than the disciples back then. We just live in a, a different time period, right? And so we must devote ourselves to these things. And of course, uh, of action is to pray. And that If there's ever been a time where we, as the people of God, need to know how to pray and, and, and actually pray, we just don't learn how to do it and not put into practice, it's today, Amen. 1 Peter chapter two, uh, 4, verse 7, it says, The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober mind so that you may pray. I mean, that was spoken over 2,000 years ago. The end of all things is near. How many know that, it's, that, that we're probably closer to the, the Lord's return than we ever have been? So if we're wondering what to do in this season, what arms we should take up, what, what stance, what, 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 um, what soapbox we should be on. Peter tells us right here, 
Since the, since the time is near, I want you to be sober-minded, and I want you to be alert so that you may what? Pray. That's it. That's what we do. We pray, and then we act, right? We don't act and then pray, right? You don't, you don't pick up a gun and then shoot it and then aim. You just don't do that. Well, you could. You just expend a lot of expensive ammo. No, you pick up a gun, you aim, and then you fire, right? It's the same thing with our prayers. We, 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 just, we just don't go off half-cocked. But we pray, and we hear what God has to say, then we move. Amen? Amen. So prayer is important. And, and, and we are in um, the fight of our life. Uh, and let me just tell you, the, the first place that we fight, on, fight in is our, on our knees. Before we ever take action in public, the first place that we fight is in prayer. And I just want to remind us of that because uh, we live in a time where we're constantly being um, agitated and aggravated into doing something. Can I hear anybody say amen? Yeah. yeah. So I just want to encourage you in that. So today we're going to look at another way of making our prayers powerful. Last week, like I said, we talked about praying in the name of Jesus. Today we're going to, we're going to study the power in praying the word of God. There's great power in praying the Word of God. If there's ever been a time where you felt like your prayers fall flat, like no matter how hard you try, that it just seems like it's, it's just hitting the ceiling or it just seems empty. If there's ever been a time where your faith is low or your, or your mindset is distracted, your mind is distracted, the power of praying God's Word cannot be um, overstated. It, it cannot be uh, put into practice enough. Not just for those reasons, but, but it, when we're in this place where, where, where we don't know what to pray and we, and we feel like our faith is ebbing and we feel like um, our energy is low, friends, when we begin to understand the power of praying the Word of God, it can transform our lives, let alone our prayer life. In John chapter 15, um, I want to, Jesus says this, and, and, and it's, the, it's the basis for my message today. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. Father, in the next few moments, Holy Spirit, would you please speak revelation understanding to all of our hearts. Well, we understand that that's the rhema word. God, please open up our understanding of prayer and as it pertains to your words, God, help us to understand the pattern that we see in your word. Help us to, to glean that in our hearts and, and, not, and not just be a religious activity, but somehow it takes a hold and, and, and excites us and causes us, Lord, to, to use your word as a, as a weapon, to use your word as something that actually makes our prayers powerful. And it's in Jesus' name that we ask this. And everybody said, Amen. See, one of the keys to answer prayer is making sure that God's word abides in us. You see, the more that we know the word of God, the more it will do two things. It will influence our life more, and it will also influence our prayers. When we know the word of God, or that just means it, the word of God is abiding in us, the word will come out of us, both when we live and when we pray or when we speak. It's important that we understand that to, to pray the word is not just simply opening up this book and just picking out a scripture and saying, okay, since it's quick and powerful and, and that it's, it's all powerful and that it's the living word of God, I can just say it and somehow that's it. But it's important to understand that the word must abide in us that we must know the word of God if we are going to speak the word of God, if we're going to pray the word of God. And, and during the course of this message, I'm going to hopefully cover some very practical ways to do that uh, for those of us that don't feel like we're biblical scholars. For those of us that feel like we, we, we don't know how to read the Bible and, and we're very limited on what it says, hopefully you're going to walk away with some very practical ways in which you can pray the word. E.M. Bounds wrote, Prayer is the great theme and content of the Bible's message to mankind. It is the basis. It is the directory of the prayer of faith. 
in the book of Psalms is just this one big collection of prayers, really. And so there's just, throughout the Bible, you, we, we may not see a scripture that says, pray the word of God, but it's, its example is, is littered throughout the word of God. As we look at the Bible as a whole, and we take that in, we see from Jesus all the way down back to the Old Testament, men and women of God who prayed and, and, and pulled from the word of God as they knew it at that time, as they had it in their hands. You see, praying the word of God is powerful for a couple of reasons. You can write these down. When we pray the word of God in, in our time with the Lord, we are praying two things. We are praying what God has done, and we are praying what he has promised. When we pray the word of God, we're praying what he has done, and we're praying what he has promised. I love it because when we pray what he has done, we understand that if he's done that for others, at some point... He's going to do it for us who live in this day and age. He is no respecter of persons. He, he, his word is yes and amen, right? Amen. And so, I, and I love that we're not only praying what he has done, but we're praying what he has promised. I love it when my kids remind me what I have promised. <laughs> you know? And, and, and when they say, but dad, you said. And I have to go, yeah, you're right. I did say that, right? There's something about my kids, when they remind me what I promise, not in, a, not in a cheeky way, not in a spoiled way, but just reminding me. How many know that I want to be a man of my word? Amen. And as, as much as within my power, I want, to, I want to fulfill what I have spoken, what I have promised to my kids. You see, all of God's promises are yes and amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19 through 21, you'll find that reference that, that it says, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ, and so through him or through Jesus, the amen or the so be it is spoken by who? By us, by, for the glory, to the glory of God. They're yes and amen in Christ when they're spoken by us too, right? For the glory of God. And so the power of the word in our prayers cannot be overstated. You see, praying the word of God uh, helps us to declare the promise of God. And, and here is where, I mean, I feel like the, the, the worship time was pretty, uh, was pretty impactful in my life this morning. Amen. The last two songs, I believe that something was in us, and those two songs uh, were, were declarations. We weren't singing them just as karaoke day on Sunday morning. <laughs> We were declaring what God does. I heard you declare. There's a difference when a, when a person speaks something when they declare it. For some reason, we have started to believe that God can do all things. He can turn graves into to gardens, right? He can, he can turn bones into armies. He can turn seas into highways. He can turn our mourning into dancing. He, he can do those things. Not only he can, but he has. You see, these are the things that when we begin to pray the word of God, there is no more powerful way for the word of God to abide in us. There's no more quicker way for the word of God to begin to abide in us than when we pray it. There's no more powerful way to actually meditate on the word of God as when we pray it. Something happens in prayer when we're not just, when we're not just reciting a scripture to a friend, which is powerful, but when we begin in prayer to talk with God about his words, something happens inside of me, inside of you. Faith begins to grow. Where your faith has seemed weak and, and it's kind of ebbed or, or your, your mind is distracted and all of a sudden you begin to, to, to pull up the word of God and to begin to speak that. There's a faith that begins to grow in us and before long, it's more than a request. It's a declaration. It becomes a command that comes out of our mouth. That's the power of praying the word of God. In our life, praying the word of God helps us to live the word of God. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, I, I told you it's throughout the entire Bible. God is speaking to Joshua. He says, do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate it meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everybody say do 
everything that's written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. He's telling Joshua, don't let this book, this Bible, this law uh, depart from your mouth. But meditate on it. You see, there's a connection between what we meditate on and what comes out of our mouth. And, and, and then when we do that, we actually begin to do it. You see, praying the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God as we do this, begins to cause us to actually do what is written. And in that way, our ways are prosperous and successful. Prayer is a powerful way to meditate on the promises of God, on the Word of God. Praying the Word helps us grow in our faith. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Often we, say, we hear that, and we think about when somebody like me or somebody on the radio speaks the Word, and you're listening to it. Well, how many know that when you're speaking the Word of God, you're also hearing the Word of God? Something that builds us up even more so when we hear our own mouth declaring it, speaking it. We can't, under, we can't underestimate this in our life. Why is praying the Word of God so powerful? Very simple. In, uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Dropping down to verse 17, it says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The reason why praying the Word is so powerful is because the Word of God is, is, is exemplified in the Bible as a weapon, as a sword. In Hebrews chapter 11, it says the Word of God is alive and active. Now get this, sharper than any, than any double-edged sword. It penetrates or it cuts even to dividing soul and spirit. So not only, not only is it a sword, but it, it, it's as accurate as a surgeon's scalpel. Right. Amen. That word penetrate means to precisionly cut to dividing the soul and the spirit, which is one of the most difficult things to differentiate between. And yet the Word of God can do that. He goes on to say that it can, that it can penetrate the, the joints and the marrow. It's given us examples. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. You see, the word when added to our prayers cuts through our emotions. I don't know if you ever prayed emotionally. I don't know if you ever prayed when your pride was engaged and your selfishness was intact or there screaming out for something. But when we pray the word, it's able to discern and to cut through all of those areas of our life with precision and helps us to pray in a more powerful way. In order to pray the Word of God, we must know the Word of God. Very quickly, there's two ways we know the Word of God. Number one, we must know Jesus. Jesus is the living Word of God. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was, he was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Dropping down to verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And at the end of this message, if you do not know Christ, whether you're sitting in this room or maybe you're online at home or at work or wherever you're at today, and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, the first way that we have the power of the Word in our life is to invite the living Word, which is Jesus Christ, to be the Lord and the Savior of our life, to surrender our lives fully, not half-heartedly, not conditionally, but just say, Jesus, I surrender all to you. And when that happens, you surrender all of your authority, all of your all the good, bad, and the ugly. You surrender it all. But you know what you pick up? His authority. His righteousness. His goodness. And that word begins to live inside of us. That's why when we pray the word and something changes from the inside, it's because the living word is now dwelling inside us through the power of the Spirit, right? That's why it's so important to, to, to exercise this powerful way of praying. The second way is getting a firm grasp 
on the word for ourselves. And uh, John, Pastor John, uh, gave uh, all of our pastors this example. When we're talking about getting a firm grasp on the word of God, he told us to hold out our hands, and then he said, okay, each finger, I, I, I want you to name them. And first we have to uh, read the word of God. We have to hear the word of God. We have to study the word of God, and we have to memorize the word of God. But he said, even with that, it's hard to have a firm grasp on the Bible, right? You, you, the thumb is left out, right? But when we add the thumb and we label that meditate on the word of God, now we can have a firm grasp on the word. And when we, when we, when, when we read and we hear and we study and we, medit or we, we memorize and we meditate, we can begin to get a firm grasp on the word of God for our own lives. And in that, we begin to live that out. But unless we have Jesus, the living word in us, and then secondly, we take time to get a firm grasp on the word for ourselves. We studied last week when, when people would just use the name of Jesus as some good luck charm, how, how that turned out for them. Because the, 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 the enemy or the demons that they were casting out said, I, I know Jesus and I know Paul who you speak of, but I don't know you. In other words, you, you have no connection with the name you're using. And and so when we look at the Word of God, when we look at uh, of praying the Word of God, we must know the Word, we must know Jesus, and we must understand that we can have a firm grasp on the Word of God ourselves, no matter who you are, no matter if you've been to Bible college, no matter if you're just starting today with a relationship with the Lord, today you, by the Holy Spirit, can hear the deep things of God for yourself. Amen. Because this book comes with a tutor, it comes with a teacher, and it's the Holy Spirit. And you can pray and you can say, God, please help me understand this because it, it, it's all Greek to me, no pun intended. And the Holy Spirit begins to illuminate our hearts. And so getting a grasp on the Word of God, and I'm just going to end today with a couple examples. How do we pray the Word of God? How does this look in our life? The Bible is so full of declarations and promises that, that I, it, time doesn't give me what I really, even to, to, to do it justice. But there's a passage in Habakkuk that I love, and when we're talking about praying for the glory of God, if you find yourself getting empty, man, the Psalms are a place where you can turn to and you can... You can begin to glorify God, just like in the Lord's Prayer when he was teaching us how to pray. He says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You're starting off with this place of great praise and adoration. I love Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, and it starts off by saying, this is a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet. Uh, it's a great name to name your somebody, but <laughs> I don't know if it's a kid's name. Maybe a dog. <laughs> Number two, or a cat. I'm sorry, I just had to say that because I love dogs. Enough said. Number two, he said this, Habakkuk, this is his prayer. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds. Lord, repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. We need to pray that out. God, I have heard of what you've done. God, I have heard of... I stand in awe of all that you have, all of your deeds, all, and you just begin to name them. Now, Lord, please repeat them in my lifetime. Please repeat them today in our time. May your name be known. I love praying as a preparation to the day, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. It's the armor of God. Putting on the armor of God is a very practical and powerful way to start your day, and, and uh, it'll be on the, on the screen up here, but, but I just want to pray through that today. I just want to give you an example of what this looks like as you personalize by per putting your personal pronouns in, in, in wherever it will fit. And, and let me illustrate this, and, and when you do it, it's so easy to thank God before I, before I actually pray what's there because it's, it's so good. In, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says this, Lord, I, I thank you that I am strong in you and I'm, and I'm strong in the power of your might today. 
Lord, I thank you that you've given me the whole armor from yourself. And so, God, today I choose to put on the whole armor of God that you've provided in order that, Lord, I may stand today against the attacks of the enemy. Lord, I thank you that the battle is not with flesh and blood, but I know now it's against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, Lord, today I put on the breastplate of righteousness. I put on, I am made righteous in Jesus. I put on Christ today. Lord, today I put on the belt of truth. God, your word is truth, and that truth has set me free. God, today I secure myself with your truth. Lord, today I put on as shoes the peace that the gospel has brought to my life. I put on the helmet of salvation, the certainty, certainty of my salvation that covers and protects my mind and my outlook. Today, God, I thank you for my salvation. Lord, today I take up the shield of faith. I now declare that I trust in your faithfulness, God. Today you are faithful, so my faith is in you. I am covered from head to toe, and the, and the fiery darts of the enemy cannot come through the shield of faith today, God. I declare that. Lord, lastly, I take up the word of God as a sword of the Spirit, declaring it to be true for my life without error, Without, it's, it's reliable, it's powerful, and it's alive. And God, today, I will pray in the Spirit for my brothers and sisters in the faith. And God, today, I thank you for that. Every day, it took me about, what, five minutes maybe? And, I'm, I, and I just kind of went through it very, those things where you get to ponder and allow that to start to sink in and to soak in that when you pray that, you're putting Jesus on. Every part of the armor is Christ, right? right. I love when I pray, there's also uh, prayers of, about my identity and my welfare in Christ that I can pray. And, and, and we can confess and come into agreement with Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, that says, these aren't up on the screen, there's too many of them. If you want to write down the reference, they're powerful. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 it says, Lord, I have been delivered from the power of darkness and translated in the kingdom of God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is talking about my welfare and my identity in Christ. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Lord, I've been crucified with Christ today. It's no longer I who live, but Christ, you are living in me. Thank you, God, that I'm no longer a slave to sin in the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and who gave himself up for me. God, thank you that I am no longer a slave to sin. Galatians chapter 3, verse 14, I have received the promise of the Spirit through faith today. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, My body, God, is a temple of your Spirit today who, you, who lives in me whom I have received from God, and I am not my own. God, I, I confess that today. I am not my own. I have been bought at a price. Therefore, I will honor you, God, with my entire body. And there I have to talk about my eyes. God, I will honor you with my eyes today. I will honor you with my thoughts today, God. I will honor you with my motives today, God. And, and I, you just begin to pray that. Ephesians chapter 1, verses four, verse 4, I am, I am chosen to be holy and without blame before you in love. I am accepted with Jesus, the beloved. I have redemption through your blood, Jesus. I have forgiveness of sins, Jesus, according to the riches of your grace today. I am an heir of God in a core with Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 16 and through 18. That's just a few of those. I've got more written. I just won't take the time. They're just all over. And friends, when you begin your prayer time, when you salt and season, I should say, your prayer time with God's word, it's powerful. You can even pray for others. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23 is a long passage. Paul in Ephesians, in Philippians, in Colossians, in Galatians, he, he prays for people. And these are the prayers that you can insert your name into, or you can insert the name of your loved ones. I can tell you that for me, um, 
I pray a lot. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. No weapon formed against me will prosper, and every tongue which rises up to accuse me will fall today. I pray that, and it goes along, it says, and this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. God is, at some point, I've prayed that so many times that it's no longer a request, it's a command. It's a command when I pray. When I pray for you, almost invariably, you'll hear me pray that passage over you. No weapon that's formed against you will prosper. And everything that is speaking against you right now will fall. It will have no power over your life. You just begin to speak out. At some point, having a grasp on the word of God, having Jesus in our life, there is this place in us where the word rises up in us. And we declare... We stand in authority. We stand full of faith because of his word. Psalms chapter 138, it says that he has exalted his word above his name. That's a powerful passage if you, if you actually study it. What he is saying is God's name is all powerful. We, we talked about that last week. But he is saying my name has done great things. But there's going to be times where, in our lives, where we, we may not know that name like that. We, may, not, we be, may be in a position where we've gone through hard times. And God says, I'm exalting my word above my name, above my reputation, above my fame, above what I've done before. I want you to begin to understand that my word is what causes you to believe again. My word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. My word, I never go back on my promises. So you might not have a whole lot of faith in what I've done in the past, but friends, declare my word because I've elevated that even over what I've done in the past. It's important for us to understand that the Word of God is powerful in our life. I'll, I'll read one more example in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 19. Paul's speaking here. He says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would grant, and I just put, my name, I put Elisa's name in there, that he would grant Elisa according to the riches of your glory to be strengthened today with might through your spirit in her inner person that Christ may dwell in Elisa's heart through faith that she being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all God's people what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that Elisa may be filled with all the fullness of God today. Jeremy read that passage today. I wanted to reiterate it in this example. I pray that over my kids. I put my kids' names in there. You, you, you begin to intercede. You begin to, to declare, to, to, to acknowledge. To declare means to acknowledge God's word and his promises. To declare means to put upon about you, but I want to harness the Word of God over my wife. I want to harness my children with the Word of God. I want to cover them with the Word of God. Praying the Word is how we do that. So in closing, today, use the Word of God to declare what God has done, because if He's done it for others, He'll do it for you. The word of God to declare what He has promised. When you come across a promise, meditate on that enough to where it becomes a declaration in you. You're not just you're not just yelling or frothing at the mouth because you think by by, by yelling and screaming somehow that's going to make it more powerful. No, when it's been lodged, when it abides in us, ask for whatever you. It begins to take up residence and we no longer just 
request thing. We no longer just hope, but, but we stand. If you're here today and you don't know Christ, maybe you've walked away, maybe faith has been something that has just been a non-issue in your life. Today, if you're online or in this room, the first important way that we know the Word is to ask Christ to come into our hearts. It says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, For if we declare with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and we believe in our hearts that God raised Him from the dead, we would be saved. For it's with our heart that you believe. You see, just, just saying a prayer, just mouthing some words. God looks at our heart. And if you, he says, if you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved today. That's the first step for having the power of the word in our life. Today, I just want to invite you to do that. Whoever you are, wherever you're at today, with, with God, with your faith, if you've walked away or maybe you've never taken that You've never taken the opportunity to choose. Everybody say choose. We accept Christ not on a feeling. We believe not because we feel it. We believe because we choose to place our faith in Him. People don't jump out of airplanes or do crazy things unless they choose to believe the parachute is going to save them, is going to give them a nice ride down. You don't do it because you just feel like it. Many people have to overcome the adversity of jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. And I'm not, I'm just saying as an example, there's a choice here. You say, man, I don't feel like, I don't have all my questions answered yet. Friends, we very rarely have all our questions answered in this life before we make huge decisions. Decisions. Think about your marriage. <laughs> you didn't have all your questions answered about the person you're sitting next to. You knew enough. He said, I will. I do. You know enough about Jesus to say, I do. But you got to choose to make that decision. It's a choice because God has given you the gift of faith. You get to choose where you put that. And all I'm encouraging you to do is choose today to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess with your mouth that He, ra that he is alive because God raised Him from the dead and you are saved. At the end of this service, we're going to have time of prayer. There will be people up here. If you want to accept Christ, if you want to start a relationship, or you've got a question, please allow us the privilege of praying with you and speaking with you. For those of us that are Christians, it's time to get a firm grasp on the Word of God, not just so that we can recite it at a moment's notice, which is powerful, but so that we can pray it. The cool thing about it, it's an open book thing. You don't have to have it all memorized. You can just open up God's Word and turn to some of the passages I've given you and begin to say, God, I don't know if this is all real or true. But I thank you today for this. If this is true, God, I thank you today for your word. And God, I'm choosing to believe that this is your word. And so I pray it today. Just be honest. God knows your heart. He loves it when his kids remind him what he's promised. God, your word says, not as a demand or like somehow we're going to manipulate God into doing what he said he would do, but because we know he loves us and because we believe in him. Amen? Get a firm grasp on the word of God. Hey, this week, I want you just to start off this week every morning, pray through Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 19. And if you do that already, I want you to pray Psalms chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, this morning we come to you with our hearts full of gratitude. We're grateful that you have not left us 
without direction. We're grateful, God, that that you have done everything to open up the way to have a relationship with you. God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for the grace that has come through all that Jesus accomplished for us on the cross and through the empty tomb. But today, God, we ask that you would help us in our prayer life, that our prayers would become more powerful through the name of Jesus and through your word. God, I pray you would open heaven up this week as each of us start off the day by preparing our lives with your armor, really just preparing our lives with putting on Jesus. God, I love you. I thank you that you are changing us and you are transforming us through your word and by your spirit. In Jesus' name, everybody said, would you stand this morning? Thank you for...